Clevelanders Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster created Superman in 1933, but did not reach the refined version we've come to know until 1938 when they sold the rights of the Superman character to Detective Comics. Superman would make his first published appearance in the anthology comic, Action Comics, number one, and was an instant hit, with a daily comic strip syndicated in newspapers soon to follow. The radio drama, The Adventures of Superman, began its 11-year run on the airwaves, mostly as 15-minute episodes, starring Bud Collier as the voice of Superman and Joan Alexander as Lois Lane. In total, 2,088 original episodes aired. Collier and Alexander would reprise their roles in the filmation Max Fleischer cartoon, The New Adventures of Superman. 17 shorts were produced during the golden age of American animation and was a big influence on both Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series. In 1948, Columbia produced a 15-part black and white film serial titled Superman. Kirk Allen was the first live action Superman and Noelle Neal played Lois Lane. The film screamed at movie matinees as four chapter stories that always ended with a cliffhanger. Allen notoriously spent an entire day suspended in the air by wires to film flying sequences, but producer Sam Katzman fired the entire flight crew after lackluster footage revealed that the wires were quite visible and instead used animation for the flight scenes. Superman made his first leap into live television with Adventures of Superman, starring George Reeves as a titular role with Phyllis Coates playing Lois Lane in the first season and Noelle Neal stepping into the role for season two on. Tragedy struck production with the sudden deaths of John Hamilton, who played Perry White, and Reeves in 1959, capping the production at six seasons. In 1973, the first of several iterations of the Super Friends cartoon debuted, featuring Superman as the leader of a condensed Justice League. Hanna-Barbera acquired the rights to DC Comics characters, which explains cringeworthy inclusions of Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog. In the second season, it was the Wonder Twins and their pet monkey Gleek. But when the second half hour of the Super Friends hour became Challenge of the Super Friends, the Legion of Doom was introduced. The roster expanded, and it was this season that would make the greatest impact on superhero culture. Besides Super Friends, The Last Son of Krypton for nearly two decades was primarily seen in comics, until director Richard Donner and The Godfather screenwriter Mario Puzo wrote a Superman screenplay for the big screen. It boasted Marlon Brando as Jor-El, Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, and Margot Kidder as Lois Lane but it launched the career of Christopher Reeve in the dual role of Superman and Clark Kent. In conjunction with Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the science fiction genre saw a renaissance in cinema. Three years later, the first Superman sequel, Superman II, was released, pitting Superman against Terrence Stamp as General Zod, Sarah Douglas as Ursa, and Jack O'Halloran as Nod, three Kryptonian criminals who escaped their Phantom Zone prison to join forces with Lex Luthor. In 1983, Warner Brothers rejected a treatment for Superman 3 that included Supergirl, Brainiac, and Mr. Mixaspitalik. Instead, we got a campier, more comedic sequel, which laid Richard Pryor opposite Reeve as Gus Gorman, who gets caught up in a scheme to destroy Superman. Superman comics hit a major pinnacle in 1985 with Superman Annual No. 11 by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, the team who would later create Watchmen. In it, Mongol puts Superman under the spell of the Black Mercy plant, which puts the victims in a trance, forcing them to live the life at the center of their heart's desire. Against all expectations, Superman's dream life turns out to be a mundane existence on a thriving Krypton, while his relatives experience an unrecognizable world on the brink of social collapse. A year later, John Byrne rebooted Superman's origin in the Man of Steel miniseries, establishing Kal-El as the only survivor of the destruction of Krypton. Clark Kent learns of his Kryptonian heritage, gets hired at the Daily Planet in Metropolis, meets with Batman for the first time, and is introduced to a rebranded Lex Luthor, now a white-collar criminal and a power-driven businessman. Meanwhile, another Superman feature was in production. In 1987, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, leapt into theaters and in a single bound crashed at the box office. A low budget, poor script, and lack of originality took the blame and this will be the last time Christopher Reeve donned Superman's red cape and trunks. Sadly, this flop also marked the death of Superman on the big screen for nearly two decades. Five years later, Doomsday is introduced in the comics as a prehistoric, genetically engineered Kryptonian who found his way to Earth, leaving a bloody trail of death behind him. And what was once considered impossible, Doomsday eventually kills Superman in a vicious brawl. The story would have lasting effects on the Superman comics that followed. Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher became the Lois and Clark of Generation X in ABC's Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. 
Focusing on the Clark Kent's alter ego and his romance with Lois Lane and their working relationship, Superman and his rogues were reduced to minor or supporting roles. The series built towards a wedding that coincided with DC Comics' release of Superman, the wedding album, where Lois and Clark got married in the comics too. But the TV series was abruptly canceled after the fourth season with an unresolved mystery of a child left at their doormat. But the 1990s had one particular high point for Superman, as screenwriters Alan Burnett and Paul Dini developed three memorable seasons of Superman, the animated series. This put the spotlight on Superman and his rogues in the same magical way that Batman, the animated series, did for the Cape Crusader. Tim Daly voiced Superman, Dana Delaney played Lois Lane, and Clancy Brown elevated Lex Luthor in what is arguably the best non-comics treatment of Superman. With no film in the works, Smallville hit the small screen in 2001 to nurture a growing young adult Superman following. The series followed a young Clark Kent dealing with the discovery of his powers amidst the trials of high school, his Kryptonian heritage, and the trust and loyalty of his friend, Lex Luthor. Smallville tested the patience of fans, though, as there was a no tights, no flights rule in the writer's room, which stretched out Clark's progression to Superman over the course of 10 seasons. In 2006, the Man of Steel finally returned to the big screen in Superman Returns, blatantly disregarding any acknowledgement of Superman 3 and 4. Brian Singer's take on Superman yielded a mediocre film with underwhelming fanfare, but it did introduce the idea of Lois and Superman having a love child. Attempting to reestablish Superman on the big screen and the DC Extended Universe, Zack Snyder and David S. Goyer adapted Superman in a gritty, realistic manner. Starring Henry Cavill, Man of Steel showed what the birth of Superman would be in our contemporary, cynical, and exploitative world. The Snyder-Goyer take on Superman continued in Batman v Superman, as Ben Affleck's Batman views Superman as a threat in the wake of the destruction left by Superman's battle with General Zod in Man of Steel. Doomsday was awkwardly ramped into the plot, as was Wonder Woman, but spoiler alert, the film ends with Superman's death. In the Justice League movie, Superman is brought back to life to help defeat Steppenwolf, all while Batman and Wonder Woman assemble the Justice League with Aquaman, Flash, and Cyborg. Unlike Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, Justice League lacked story, but for a handful of moments, we were able to see the Justice League all together on the big screen.